Well, good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Today is the 17th of July, 2004, wherever you are, whenever you get this tape. It's still July 17th, 2004, here in Marseilles, the Assembly of Yah. Before we start the Sabbath meeting today, we ask and have prayed that uh, everybody who receives this message and the Sabbath uh, program today will be blessed, will be encouraged, will be lifted up, will be led in some powerful spiritual way that Yahweh will touch us, touch you, and we will grow in grace and truth and faith, because his coming draweth nigh. We have a few announcements before we start today. We want to announce, first of all, that the spiritual warfare program that uh, has been developed here through Yahweh's leading after 15 years of research and teaching and praying for people and all the things we've studied and read and learned about is now, as you know, on videotape, VHS tape. However, there's been an improvement. Uh, Yahweh has provided for us to be able to put this on DVD. This program now is on DVD tape on four DVDs that is clear, concise, and very professional. In fact, this week, he has led us to an audio-visual specialist that the program now has a light, sound, music, and uh, articulation inter, uh, introduction to it that is professional, it's stimulating, it's interesting, and it just enhances the program so much. And so there is actually a second or third generation of the program already that's available. Let us know if you're interested in that. You can have it on VHS tape or DVDs. Also, because of Beverly's uh, fortitude and uh, Yahweh's leading and uh, her creativity and ability, uh, the DVD programs now are available for the Sabbath meetings. If you'd like to have copies of these meetings at home for your fellowship or your teaching or sharing with uh, neighbors and people you've witnessed to, they're also available on tape or DVD. We also have available now, we've or ordered and received a new case of the books showing how Gnosticism, even in the first century, crept into the New Testament assembly. And that what we have now in Christianity and in the world and the tribes of Israel who are worshiping in the way they do worship, basically they are worshiping in Gnosticism. The title of that book is Primitive Christianity in Crisis. And we have a case of those, if you'd like those. Uh, they have, uh, we ask an offering for those when and if you send for those. We also uh, have been led, and I'm pretty, much, pretty sure right now, even though it's only July, we figure out it is only 60 days, two months, until we leave for the Feast of Tabernacles. It's right at the door. It's getting close, even though this is the middle of summer. And it looks like we're going to David Kenders in Loveland, Colorado, and his actual feast site will be Estes Park up in the mountains there just above Colorado, about an hour and a half away from the main city area. That's our announcements for today. If you'd like to turn to Hebrews chapter 4, Beverly. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 through 10, we'll do our reading in the introductory portion of the meeting. Hebrews 4, 3 through 10. And even though I have not announced the subject for the message today, this is a leading for the message, so we might uh, keep this in mind. Of course, we want to put Yahweh's word in our hearts. Paul is talking to the Hebrews. He's talking to the tribes of Judah. He's talking to the stock of Israel who knew and understood the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, and the writings that were early on. And he says, we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have, as I swore in my wrath, if thou shalt enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And Yahweh did rest in the seventh day from all his works. And in the place some enter in therein. And they to whom it was First preached, entered not in because of unbelief. Those were the children in the wilderness. Again, he limited a certain day, saying, David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear 
his voice. And that we, we would emphasize that today. Hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Yahshua had given them rest, then would he have not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his works, as Yahweh did from his. Hallelujah. At this time, as we always do, we'll turn the program over to Beverly for praise and singing. Hallelujah. Turning your songbooks to number one, I keep falling in love with him. I keep in love with him.
27, wherever I am. Beverly. Uh, since about a year and a half ago, Yahweh has given us 
uh, leading to get into more music. Beverly's leading, learning more music on her auto harp, which is a very unusual instrument, and I'm trying to learn more chords and music on the guitar. So, praise Yahweh. We're going to take time now to make our prayers and requests known before Yahweh. We would uh, give you some prayer requests. No matter when you receive this, we'd ask you to pray for the people we're about to mention. Uh, Brad Zeigler, we would ask you to pray for him, keep him in your prayers for leading, healing, deliverance, guidance. Cheryl Gaudiano in Florida for healing and strength. R.C. Sanifer from Augusta, Kansas, a pastor out there who needs healing and restoration. William Patrick from Southern Illinois. Uh, John Trescott for healing and strength. Uh, he has a major heart problem. Lloyd Mayer for healing out in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Mike Bannock uh, from Northern Illinois for leading and uh, guidance from Yahweh. And uh, Richard Kaczynski from Lena, Illinois. That he would be called, that Yahweh would put his hand on him and bring him into the faith and just... Uh, bring him into this great and wonderful blessing and salvation calling. We'll be back with you momentarily. Hallelujah, we praise Yahweh and Yeshua. We have a message today, and I ask that, of course, that this is the word of Yahweh, that we all pay special attention but I ask it especially today because this is a message that is very, very basic. In the introduction to the program, we talked about a time when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And we read Hebrews where there was a day that was reserved unto the children of Israel. The message is not about the Sabbath. But they had meat, and they had the word, but the word was not mixed with faith. And where the focus today is the word, the title of the program today is, Why Do You Read the Bible? And this may seem like a very, very elementary question, but we want to explore some different facets. I got an article from Jerry Heelan in Texas, YEA Ministries, and there was a an article there about studying the Bible and it prompted me to come up with this today. And I have to say that it touched me in a special way because Beverly and I and the people here that work and do ministry have become, we have become so busy that this last week or two weeks we have not on a regular basis read the Word of Yahweh and been in the Word. And so it touched me. And I know that if it's happening with us it's probably happening with others that we're getting sometimes too busy, or we substitute things for the reading of the Word. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8.3. There's a scripture that you're going to hear embedded here that is found in Deuteronomy 8.3, Matthew 4.4, 4, and Luke 4.4. 4. It's in the word three times, word for word, verbatim, verbatim. Deuteronomy 8.3. Find about Yahweh, Yahshua of the Old Testament, and he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. No man has heard Yahweh's voice at any time. So where do we hear the word of Yahweh. Where do we hear Yahweh? We hear it in his word, his printed word. And you know, the early testaments that were written, 100, 200 A.D. in the cent uh, early centuries of the early apostles in the church, the assembly, it was written in Aramaic and Hebrew. Uh, the letters were all run together. There was no commas. There was no new paragraphs. There was no periods. And, and it looked like it was encrypted, like it was a secret message, and in a way it was. And today, Yahweh has brought and processed, refined, and changed into languages available to us through miraculous computers, printing presses, machines, and given us a word, and his word, 
that at least on the printed page is clear that we can read in our own language in our own living rooms in our own prayer places with comfort and ease dependability availability it's here it's nigh unto us the scripture says it's nigh unto us we got a copy of the Aramaic Peshitta a few weeks ago and in the front page it had an example of the early scriptures how it was written and the author says can you read this and, and we couldn't read it and it was all in English we could not read it transposed directly from the Hebrew to English all run together we get too busy we're going to look at some reasons why it's critically important to stay in the word every day with Yahweh and of course we're going to hear, and we already have a message, we've already heard the scripture, that if we eat three times a day, and Americans, I have to admit, are, are hooked on food, they're, they're habitual eaters, we are, that if we eat food three times a day, isn't the spiritual food more important than physical food? And we're going to see through this study today that man has, Yahweh has placed a spot, a need, an emptiness in man not only for love and acceptance and spiritual things, but especially the spiritual things that are of the Word. We need to feast on that and feed ourselves every day. Yahweh, we heard in this, he said, he suffered thee to hunger. He let him hunger. He did that on purpose in the wilderness. He created a need, and this is a, a, a truism. I think it's number 43 in the book we're working on. It's Rule number 43, he creates a need and then he fills it. That's what he does, especially in his children. Yahweh creates a need in us. Let's go to John 4, 13. We are spiritual creatures and he creates a need for us. He, he has this emptiness which is only filled by one thing. Yahshua answered in John 4, 13 through 14, John answered and said unto her, I'm sorry, Yahshua said unto her. We're talking about the woman at the well. Whatsoever, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. We have a thirst in us. We have a thirst for natural water. But we also have a thirst for spiritual water and spiritual food. It's a need in us. And he is alluding here that this is a need. And you know, if we drink and feed on this word, then we won't thirst anymore if we do this on a regular basis. He gives us a hunger. Let's go to Mark 8, 2 through 3. Mark 8, 2 through 3. You know, he brought and they followed him as he spoke. Their hearts burned within them. He brought thousands and thousands of people out into the wilderness that followed him to hear him preach. Yahshua had thousands of people, 5,000 without women and children at one time, came out in the wilderness to, to see him, to hear him. And they followed him at one point, it says in Mark 8, 2 through 3, they followed him for three days. And they were ready to faint. They had no water, they had no food. Let's read that. The apostles are saying, you know, we need to send them back or do something. You know, they've been with us three days. And he says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far what is he saying here let's look at this a little more closely he encouraged them spiritually to follow him didn't he they followed him out where there was no motels there was no highway there was no cell phones there was no food and they kept going and they would have gone on Three days without food. How many on the outreach program right now, raise your hands, 
have fasted for three days. We just had a brother here fast for 14 days on water only. And they were willing to go on. He created a need. He kept bringing them, bringing them away from home. And they were hungry. And you know what? It was Yahshua's perfect will that they don't go back hungry. And if they did try to go back hungry, what would happen? He says here, they will faint by the way. Is he telling us something else here? That if we continue without food, spiritual food, that we will faint by the way? I think he is. You know how we just take a two or three words out of a scripture we've read over and over and over and over, and we see another profound meaning. Let's go to Jeremiah 6.16. Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus saith Yahweh, Stand ye in the way, and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Seek the old paths. How are we going to seek the old paths and the old ways, not the ways of the world today, but the old ways, if we don't read the word and see what that old path is? The old paths, the old ways from a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years ago are in this word. That's where the truth is. That's where the old paths are. And we get that from Yahweh's word. You know, he, he still creates a need. He gives us questions. He gives us curiosity in the spirit, in spiritual things. We have questions about life, death, faith, hope, love, about our wives, about our husbands, about marriage, about raising children, the word. Yahshua's life, Yahshua's spirit, Yahweh's will. He puts those in our hearts, in our minds. And the only place we can find those answers is in the word of Yahweh. And I tell you today that going to Sabbath meeting and hearing the word for an hour or an hour and a half is not enough food to get us through. It's not enough. We need to be fed every day. You know, he could have made us that we didn't have to eat food. He could have made us that way. You know, there are plants like the hanging moss you see down in Georgia and Florida that hang on trees. They get most of their subsistence through the air. They're air plants. We could have been like that. He made us eat things and made our bodies a way that we needed to consume things and take it in. He told Daniel, eat the little book. And he said it was sweet. Several places he says, open your mouth and I will fill it. The eating of food in the carnal is a metaphor, a direct connection to the spiritual understanding of we need spiritual food. We need other things in our body. And so we're encouraging today that we get more into the word every day. That every day you may read the same scripture that you read last week to this week. And he'll, you'll get more out of it. Because the word is spiritual, and it's deeper and deeper and deeper. Another way that he creates a knee, he calls us closer to him. In James 4, 8 through 10. And this is another thing that we can get through the word. We are able to get closer to him, and he calls us closer to him. We want to be close. We need that fellowship. In James 4, 8 through 10, it says, Draw nigh unto Yahweh, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Not all of, us, all of us are doing that. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. There's a need. He does that. He can do that. He can break our spirits. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, and he shall lift you up. We don't want to go there, do we? And one of the ways that we draw closer to him, because that's his perfect will, is to get close and stay close to him. Under the shadow of his wings shall we dwell. Yeshua said, 
I called and hearkened unto them and, and would protect them and bring them unto me and protect them as a, as a chicken protects her, ch or her chicks under her wings. And they would not. We need to really get back in the word because this word protects us. It answers the questions and the things that he puts inside of us. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and will sup with him and him with me. How do we do that? The primary way we do that is through the word of Yahweh. Proverbs 1.28 says, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. We don't want to go there. We don't want to stay away so long in our walk and be so drift so far apart from him that maybe when we have to call he won't be there we don't want to do that we have a love to be in his presence and one of the ways to be in his presence is to read the word of Yahweh you can hear him if you allow yourself and you pray when you before you read for revelation, understanding, for these things to be put in your heart, to fall in love with the deeper amount of the word and receive deeper knowledge and understanding, revelation, you can almost, if you are in the right spirit and attitude, hear him speaking through the word. You know, it says his spirit testifies, our spirit, that we are the sons of Yahweh. And it says, yet, in another place, that no man has heard his voice and seen him at any time. No man, but his spirit witnesses to our spirit that he has given us. Maybe we can hear him. We need to satisfy this love and this need that he's put in us to be in his presence. Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611. Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And where that is, is in the word. Being in the word. Maybe you understand. Maybe you have an unction where I'm going with this. Who is the word? Yahshua is the word of life. He's the spokesman. That's where we're going with this. He is the word. He gives us a love for the truth. He is the only truth. In Psalms 119.97 it says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is the meditation, my meditation all the day. Law is part of the truth, part of the word. It ministers unto us. We are law keepers, covenant keepers. We seek and hunger after righteousness. And we do that through the word, through the testimony, through the laws, through the commandments, statutes, and judgments. Law is just not law. It's righteousness. And it's a way of life. And there is no freedom without the law. John 4.24 says, Yahweh is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And he seeks such to worship him. Where do we get that spirit? Where do we get that truth? We get the Spirit from Yahweh when we have hands laid on us after being baptized in the name of Yahshua. But this Spirit is enhanced and it comes more through the Word. One way, through the Word. Because the Word is Spirit and the Word is truth. So we undoubtedly, by the Word, by the testimony, and by the experience, we are spiritually fed by the Word of Yahweh. Yahshua is the Word. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And the Word of Yahweh is a manifestation. It is the Word. It is Yahshua. Because the works here in this Word is Yahshua, which is a revealing also of the Father. So when you read this Word, you're seeking Yahshua. When you're reading this word, you're getting closer to Yahshua. And you're getting to know him. 
and you're finding out what is the way, what is the old way, what is the proper way. What is the truth? Because the word of Yahweh is the only truth. Everything else out there is lies. And what is the life? Life was in him, and he imparted that life to us. And the source of all life, right here, is from Yahshua. And that comes also out of the word. We cannot live with this. There is life in this word. We need it every day. Yahshua is the word of truth. Do we really love him? Do we really seek him? I know there's other things that we can do in this walk besides read the word, but right now we, we need to stress the importance today of staying in this word and searching the word. And John 5, 39 says, search the scriptures. That's a commandment. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of him, of Yahshua. Who has eternal life? Those who search the scriptures. Those no, more noble, uh, those more noble, like the Bereans. Who are they that have eternal life? Those who seek Yahshua and through the scriptures, who study. In the Second Timothy two fifteen, it says, "Those who study, they study to show thyself, to show themselves approved unto Yahweh, a workman." that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 He commands us to study. He commands us to get in the word. But we need it. He has created us with a need. And that need tends to life. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things. How can we prove all things if we don't do it by the word? Today, so many of us are getting tapes, videos, study tracks, newsletters, all kinds of things in the front door. How can we prove when we read those things that those things are true or what is in error unless we study to show ourselves approved to find the truth? We need to do it every day. And you might sit down. We might sit down and have a Bible reading, a general Bible reading in the Old or the New Testament. And it may not be to prove anything, but he might show you something that you need to know because he uses this word to feed us. You know how we need vitamin C, vitamin E, we need protein, we need vegetables, we need fruits. That's a representation of different things that are in the word. The word isn't just the word, it's broken down to different composites, spiritual things, that feed us so that all the nourishment is there that we need. But we don't get it if we don't read it and study it and meditate on it. Here are some wrong reasons of why we should read the Word. What are some wrong reasons or th reasons we might be reading the Word for which are short-sighted? Some read it to have power or powerous of knowledge over others because knowledge is power. Some read it so they can talk more intelligently about the word and be familiar with it. Others read it to gather theories and bring questions that gender strife and division. Others read it because they're fear of judgment. They don't read it out of love. It's like a band-aid religion or a band-aid activity for them, reading the word as if that will save them. Because they are told to, because they are told to, it's an external motivation. It's because somebody told them to read the word that they read the word. That's the that's wrong re reason to do it. Some of us read the word out of habit, not really getting into it, absorbing it, really embracing it, with a passive mind or a bored attitude. Some read it to prove their own agendas or their own ideas, proof texting so they can stay where they are instead of really seeking the truth. Some people read it just to prove somebody else wrong. But you know what? Yahweh has a way of turning that around and you find out what's right. 
There are other substitutes that we think are substitutes and acceptable substitutes for reading the Word. And there really isn't any ex acceptable substitute for reading the Word. What are some of the other things we do that we tend to put in place of reading the Word? One might be prayer. Prayer is not reading the Word. Prayer is prayer. It's not the same thing. Singing and praise, that's good too, and we need to do that, but it's not the same thing as reading the Word. Memorization of scriptures is good, and, and it gives us practice, and it puts that scripture in our heart, but it's not like reading the Word, and just reading and getting in and studying. Reading articles and newsletters is not the same as reading Yahweh's Word. Sometimes we'll sit down and try and catch up on all the reading of the newsletters and things that we get. And I have a tendency sometimes to think, well, you know, I've, I've read all these scriptures they put in here. I don't need to read the Word today, but I don't think that that's an acceptable substitute. Warfare prayer, for you who have learned and understood the power of the Word that He gives us, warfare prayer is not prayer, and warfare prayer is not reading the Word of Yahweh. That's not an acceptable substitute. We do a lot of warfare prayer here. We do a lot of deliverance here. But it's not the same as reading the word of Yahweh. Unacceptable substitutes. Still good things, but not a substitute for reading the word of Yahweh. There are great, great benefits that I probably cannot touch on. Just scratch the surface of all the benefits there are for reading the word of Yahweh. In the word of Yahweh, he is, his mode is, is one of his conduits and ways that he can personally speak to us and touch us. There is joy in reading, joy of discovery about new found things and truths and deeper understandings, reading the word of Yahweh. There is revelation, spirit, gifts, manifestation of Yahweh's spirit when we read his word. Then in other ways we can't get. We hear his voice. I believe that we can. There is an interaction. When we read the word of Yahweh, as I alluded to about revelation, him and his spirit, there is an interaction here between Yahweh and us. There is a spiritual interaction and a communing with him, reading the word. It is spiritually stimulating. Paul said it's good to be zealous in good things. The word is stimulating. When we read it, almost every day we find something that we get excited about. I want to be like you do. I want to be spiritually excited about the word of Yahweh and Yahshua and what Yahweh is doing and his whole plan of salvation. I want to be zealously affected. Hallelujah. In the scripture is comfort, hope, Promises, blessing, peace, anointing, spirit, understanding, wisdom, counsel, might, the fear of Yahweh. Everything that is about Yahweh and Yahshua, about them, is found in this book. It's a manifestation of them in black and white print. But we have to be spiritual. We have to be in the spirit. We have to pray. We have to be in a right frame of mind because this is spiritually discerned. The carnal mind cannot know it or understand it. And there's those out there, unfortunately, pray for them, that are always studying and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Always studying about a subject. Always gendering questions and never finding answers for a lot of their questions and the things they're looking for. In Romans 15, 4, it says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, talking about comfort and peace, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. Romans 15, 4. Through patience and comfort of the scripture we may have hope. The scripture, the word of Yahweh, builds faith 
Romans 16, 26, Romans 16, 26, the word of Yahweh builds faith. But now it is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, there it is, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting Elohim, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to Yahweh, only wise, be glory through Yahshua, Messiah, forever. Hallelujah. The building of faith through knowledge of the scriptures. Manifest. Manifest. Yahshua and his plan is made manifest through the scriptures and the prophets. And that's not just the Old Testament. That's the whole word. When we say the prophets, we tend to think of the major and minor prophets of the Old Testament. It's all the scripture of Yahweh. All scripture is given for inspiration. By inspiration. For knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Correction, reproof, doctrine. The making of wisdom. I think that if we could poll everyone that is on the outreach program and ask how many of us want to be more wise, according to Yahweh's wisdom, not the wisdom of men or the wisdom of the world, we'd all say, yes, we want to be more wise. Well, it says in 2 Timothy 3.15, it says, and that from a child... Thou hast known, Paul is talking to Timothy, hath known the Kodesh scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith. Able to make us wise through, for salvation, unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua Messiah. In the word is everything we need to know. Everything is there. And he will reveal it word by word, scripture upon scripture, line upon line. He will reveal it, what we need, if we seek it as we are seeking him. He reveals that understanding. And we want his understanding. We want his wisdom. We need this. Because the wisdom of the world tends to death. And there's a way that seems right unto man, but that way leads unto death. Only in this, only in Yahshua Messiah, the word, the spokesman, the utterance, is life and blessing and peace and confidence. John 14, 6. Yahshua said this out of his own mouth. Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except by me. By his words, we come unto the Father by his testimony, by his name, by his blood, by his utterance and promise that is so. No man comes to the Father except by me. If he had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. If we have seen Yahshua, We've seen the Father. You know, we have. By the character, the desires, the spirit, the words, the examples, his life, his utterance, and the things that he did, which would, if we, everything was written down in books, the books would fill the whole world, John said, we have seen him spiritually and know him. We know him. Isn't that what this is all about? Getting to know Yahshua and falling in love with him? That's what this is about. And we can know him as a wife knows her husband and a husband knows his wife. They're close. They trust each other. They understand each other. They can anticipate words, their moves, their feelings, their hopes, desires. He is the way and the life, and that, that very, very life is found in this, in this word. Key words reveal the mind of Yahweh and Yahshua. Key words. 1 Corinthians 2.16 <clears throat> 1 Words reveal the mind of Yahshua in 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind... <coughs> Excuse me. 
who has known the mind of the Master, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Yahshua. We have the mind of Messiah. How? Through the Word. Through the Word and the testimony and the teachings. They are able to give us salvation. Psalms 37.3 Psalms 37.3 Trust in Yahweh and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. We dwell on the land, this land, and we're fed. We're fed unto eternal life. He lead us in the green pastures. He lead us before, before the, beside the still waters. Green pastures. This is a green pasture. This is the feeding. Good grass, good grain that tends to life. <coughs> Discover his love. Psalms 48 verse 9. Discover his love in the word. It says, We have thought of thy loving kindness, O Yahweh, in the midst of the, thy temple. Thy loving kindness, O Yahweh, in the midst of thy temple. Psalms 103 verses 1 and 3. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless thy Kodesh name. There it is. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not all thy benefits, who, for, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who heals all of our diseases, who forgives all of our iniquities. Loving kindness. He does things for us we don't even ask him to do. That are not even important just because he loves us. It comforts us. It blesses us. And there's more blessing when we get into the word. It says, husbands, love your wives even as Yahshua loved the assembly and gave his life for it. We love Yahshua and we... We can seek him more deeply if we get into the word because he is the word. He is in here. When a lesson is given, that lesson comes from him. It's his mind. It's his character. Speaking about finding his love while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. I think that's love. I really think that's love. Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's love. His patience and grace with us is love. His correction of us is correction in love for us. A parent that doesn't correct their child doesn't love them. He corrects us. And if he doesn't correct us, and if we don't take that correction, we are not children, but bastards. In conclusion, we say today that we need to feed more on this, this life, on this word, that this word is life, it is Yahshua. And so it says again in Matthew 4, 4, that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. We live by every word, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of words here that we just need to get into our mind, get into our heart. You know, John said, we can't sin because his seed dwelleth in us. Well, that, that means several things here. Remember the parable? The Son of Man is Yahshua sowing the seed, and the seed is the Word. But the seed is also the children of the kingdom. They go out and they plant. And unless that seed dies and goes into the ground, it cannot produce fruit. All this has to do with the Word, which is also seed. So let's finish in conclusion with John 6, 32-35. John 6, 32-35. Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread, that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of Yahweh is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. 
Then said they unto him, Master, evermore give us this bread. And Yeshua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Yeshua is the word. And that word is life unto us. We need to have it every day. We need that strength. We need that encouragement. We need that power. We need those promises, that comfort and love every day. And that's where it comes from. For the chief part. So, friends and brethren, don't starve yourselves. Feast on the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. The name of the song I'm going to sing is It Is No Secret. Thank you, Beverly. Your songs are always a blessing. When we read the word of Yahweh, we are always blessed. 
And you know, it's no secret what Yahweh can do for us. All the stories, all the history, all the testimony, all the things that are written here are possible for us if we want them. All these things. And you know, in chapter 11 of Hebrews, it talks about the Hall of Fame of all these people who quenched the enemy, quenched the mouth of lions, closed the mouth of lions, brought people back from the dead and did all these things. All these kinds of things are possible for us in Yahweh's will. They're possible for us in our lives. And there's nothing impossible for Him. And if He loves us and be with us, and all His answers toward us are yea, then if nothing's impossible for Him, there's nothing impossible that He might not do in, our, in His will in our life. He knows what we need. He knows what we're going to pray. He answers before we even speak, it says. Seek him with all your heart. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that comes through many, many ways, singing, praise, prayer. But the major way that it comes is through the word. Let's feast on him and feast on that word every day. Every day. It tends to life. Yahweh bless you and keep you and strengthen you and keep you safe in these end times. Hallelujah.